Great relationships don't just happen. They're designed. Why leave love to chance when you can make strategic decisions in your relationship just like you do in your career? The days of settling for mediocre are over. Welcome to the Project Relationship Podcast. I'm Dr. Jolie Hamilton. And I'm Ken Hamilton. Join us as we explore the decisions and choices that make relationships work no matter what life throws your way. It's time to reimagine relationships from the ground up. Welcome to Project Relationship. Hi, and welcome to the Project Relationship Podcast. I'm Dr. Jolie Hamilton. And I'm Ken Hamilton. And we're going to talk about possibly one of my favorite topics of all time, jealousy. Jealousy. (laughs) Um, That probably sounds like a weird thing to have be one of your favorite topics, but if you know me at all, um, then you probably already know that jealousy is something I study academically. Um, When I wrote my doctoral dissertation, it was on the lived experience of jealousy in polyamorous individuals. I have read um, hundreds of articles, um, academic articles, scholarly articles. Um, I've collected dozens and dozens of interviews about jealousy. It doesn't have the same sort of negative connotations for me because I've swum in the seas of jealousy both personally and academically for a long time now. And so I find jealousy to be actually a wonderful jumping off point for conversation. Yeah. So why, why do you, what do you find so fascinating about it? Well, in jealousy lies so much information about what we want. Jealousy is a wonderful indicator of what we care about. That said, (laughs) by and large, jealousy is not well used as an indicator and is often misused even to the point of radical violence, um, like, like the, the kind of intense violence that leads to death and, and grievous bodily harm. So I don't want to minimize the impact that jealousy can have when it is played out negatively. However, the stories I have collected about jealousy tell me with, with no doubt that there is more to the picture than just the stories of negativity and 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 violence. So we got to start off by just defining what jealousy is. Okay. Okay. Jealousy is a protective feeling of hostility um, around the threat or whether this threat is real or imagined to the bond you have with what we would call in psychology a love object. So it's, it's about the idea that your, your connection to a beloved other could be interrupted or threatened. So jealousy is an emotional experience that is a triangular one, right? It's triangular because there is this third element, this interrupter. So there's you and the love object, and then yeah. this third thing, right. which so is... Me, my beloved, and my either someone real who I, who I know to exist, who I either imagine or or am witnessing, attempting to interrupt my love bond, or someone I imagine might interrupt. And this could be completely imaginary as in, I have no reason to believe that anything exists. I have nothing. I can't even really draw a mental picture. I just, I just have this feeling or Um, A common place for people to rile up jealousy these days is scrolling through our partner's social media feeds and imagining that interactions with certain people are actually covert interruptions. Um, Mate poaching is the the technical term for it. So imagination plays a large part in this. Yeah. So I studied depth psychology. And so when I studied jealousy, I studied it from the perspective of taking seriously the imaginative, the imagination of jealousy. It's not a simple emotion. It's a a complex emotion. Jealousy is made up of more primal emotions like fear, anger, sadness, grief, anticipatory grief, anxiety, which is a kind of fear. But we can't really look at jealousy as a single thing. We have to sort of pop its hood, look inside and see what what sort of 
tone and texture. What's going on with this jealousy? What emotions are riding along with it? When we do that, at root, there's always some sort of fear in there. Now, that fear might look like anxiety, a sort of like uh, pernicious worry. It might look like insecurity. It might look like comparison. But the fear is in there because it's about the fear of a loss. Whether that fear is substantiated or not, it's a, there's this introduction of, I might lose something I have. And we differentiate this from envy. We're going to do a whole separate episode on envy because envy is about two. It's about a, a connection between two people and it's about wanting to have or be what the other is. So there's, there's just these two points. It's a dyadic relationship. So let's sort that out and say, while we're talking about jealousy, we're just going to talk about this triangular experience of you, the beloved, and the, and the perceived interrupter. And let's draw attention to the fact that jealousy impacts all three of those positions. So you might not be feeling jealous in, from the perspective of, oh, I feel jealous that someone's going to interrupt. You might be someone who is, is being cast in the role of the interrupter. Mm. You might be someone whose partner is experiencing profound jealousy that you feel has no basis. Um, you, you don't feel like that has anything to do with an objective reality. So all three points on this triangle can be astonishingly tr problematic, depending on how we act them mm -hmm. out. Okay. Um, so you said that jealousy is a complex emotion. Mm -hmm. So do you mean that jealousy isn't like the source of the feeling like it's, it's made up of yeah like i'm feeling jealous are you saying that there's always a question of what i don't know what kind of jealousy or what it's made up of when we talk about jealousy one of the ways i i ask people to look more closely at their jealousy is if you dismiss it if you if you hear someone saying oh i'm just jealous that mm. sort of um squishing down or, or shoving it out of the out of the way um dismissing it as just jealousy reduces the complexity okay the, yeah i would yeah. i would say yes right. jealousy isn't a standalone um one size fits all we can just define it it's always going to look like this it, it takes on a certain dynamic based on what's going on based on i mean talk about this three psyches three imaginations and <laughs> This is okay. Conceptually, we get a little messy here. I can actually, I can create my own imagination of your imagination and my own imagination of the interrupter's imagination. And now I've got this layered upon layered imaginal realities. And here's the thing. Wow. The imagination is profoundly real in its own way. What I, what I can imagine can be true like there's a lot of like i can i can make it true for myself mm -hmm. even if it's not like objectively possible sure and so jealousy is so powerful because it is connected to our imagination the way that we the way that we imagine our love bonds and jealousy to be happening is going to have an impact on on whether we feel safe, whether we feel threatened, whether we feel insecure. And we have a lot to do. Like we, each of us is actually, we have a lot of say over how we interpret this experience of jealousy. Okay. So you have these, um, so what you said about uh, just jealousy, it's like, okay, so this is jealousy. I know what jealousy is and this is it and then you push it away or whatever. But the claim that you know what it is, you just described these these three elements, change either any one of them even a little, and you've got a completely different thing. Yeah. So even though you still call it jealousy, it's brand new, it's something different. Right, so hmm. a, an archetypal perspective on jealousy, which is the one I take, mm -hmm. an archetypal perspective is that it is triangular and triangles are a dynamic, It's it's got this dynamic quality. Um, triangles are movement and they're alive. Like There's a lot happens. of energy, which is why the love triangle makes such a great story to oh. put on the screen, right? So we are surrounded by 
stories of jealousy, our songs, our literature, our music, our our um, our films, our great literature, our our trashy literature, like <laughs> yeah. all of it. It is mythology. You can't look, open up all the mythology and just look at all of the jealous stories. If you took jealousy out of the way humans tell stories, well, we'd have thinner libraries. Much thinner. It would be, it would be a very different place. Now that tells me, and this is why I take an archetypal perspective. That tells me that jealousy is normal. It's to be expected. It is typical, it's banal, it's mundane. And at the same exact time, it is completely overwhelming. When something is typical and overwhelming, we're, we ha can usually look closely and say, oh, this is about an archetypal, a, a universal sort of pattern that exists in the human experience. That doesn't mean that everybody experiences jealousy the same way. It doesn't mean that everybody will even experience it in their lifetime. But on the whole, it exists in the human experience. So even if you don't personally experience jealousy or you experience it in such a, a um, you know, like tampered down, like it, it's just not a big thing for you. Well, you exist with other humans. We exist in this world. So jealousy is part of what? we live with. It's and, part of our reality. And you and I have had conversations about my experience with jealousy, which is, which has appeared to be very minimal. Yeah. I don't seem to get jealous, but I think we've seen pretty clearly over the past couple of years that what happens is I don't feel jealousy. I just act like a twerp. <laughs> 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 right, and, so you and they're not and they're not horrible, awful ways. No, it's pretty subtle. It's not exactly. huge, but it's there. Right, so you at some point took the sensations, the feelings. We're going to talk about. I I work through jealousy in five steps, um, and I and I'll outline those for everyone. But you took the sensations of jealousy, and somewhere early in your experience, yeah. learned how to minimize the the disruption that it causes yep and yet it is it's a very twerpy sort of yeah. behavior minimize the intentional disruption it causes and that then made all this unintentional stuff happen that i didn't that like either is there you go there's yeah. another clue that this is an archetypal quality because it, it came when up. you push a complex when you push an archetypal experience under the surface you push it into the unconscious so imagine your conscious self is above the a pool of water and your unconscious self is standing in the pool of water you push a, a beach ball under the water where's it gonna pop up who, who knows? knows how high is it gonna pop up who knows yeah it, yeah we are we are touching something that has immense capacity for disruption and for challenge and for growth and, and for this growth is yes. why yeah. i think so jealousy claimed me I did not claim it. Jealousy claimed me the day I told you I loved you. Uh, November 15th, 2009, I told you I was, I loved you and I didn't care what you thought about that basically. <laughs> yeah. um, and you told me something. You told me that you loved the passion and intensity I had for all of life. And I wanted to tattoo that on my body. So I did. I had it translated into a kanji symbol for intensity of all life. And the translator worked with me for a long time to figure out exactly what that would translate to in kanji. Like what, how, how would, he, how would they do that? And eventually they came back there like, I've got it. The symbol for zeal. And I was like, awesome. Do it. Sounds good. Tattooed it on my back, right, right between my shoulder blades. So zeal is the, the Greek root for jealous. So I have literally been followed by jealousy since that day when my whole world turned upside down. And you did not turn my world upside down. I turned my world upside down inside. Had nothing to do with active behaviors and everything to do with I couldn't unsee what was in front of me, which was that I felt a lot of things. So jealousy for me is it's it's woven right into my story. Yes. And learning how to accept the fact that it is an opportunity for growth, that it is a, a chance to know myself better. 
has freed me from feeling like I need to kill jealousy or crush jealousy or own it or yeah, cure is the word that comes up the most often. So That's you not how experience it. I experience it. Mm -hmm. I experience jealousy and I help I teach people to experience jealousy in a different way. And it is a process. It is it is a process of coming to connect more deeply with myself so that I can connect with you without asking you to 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 manufacture an illusion mm -hmm. that nothing will ever change and nothing will ever interrupt our love it is not it is not in any way easy or simple nope <laughs> it's neither of those things it isn't this is but... the, this is for me the big work of my life this is part of why i'm here i know it is and you and we together have committed to growth over comfort it's not comfortable to do that stuff. But the illusion that you just described of of stasis, of things not changing, of of that kind of safety. Unchanging means no growth. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta grow you gotta change to grow. So And it is uh and jealousy it is, is one source of the energy that right. creates growth. It's not the only one. Luckily there are lots oh, no, of yummy ones lots. too. But yeah, there's some that are more fun. <laughs> but by sticking with this one, um, I have found that there are there are stories that I have been told about how love was supposed to feel. Yeah. Then it turns out, yeah, those were just one narration, one way. So in other words, I think we've all heard, we've all seen, heard men part of a love triangle. And a love triangle is supposed to have some sort of resolution, right? Where the right two people finally come back <laughs> together. Yeah. I mean, we can look back as far as, you know, well, Every story with a story from the Greek tradition, yeah. tradition of mythology, every Hera story. But we can look at um, the study of Aphrodite, Hephaestus, and um, Ares. We can look there. We can look into um, so many. There are just so many stories. If we, if we imagine that a jealousy story has to be resolved by the, by the correct people coming back into dyadic relationship, we miss the fact that the jealousy, it, it just exists. It's part of life. And it also, it, um, there's this presumption that, that we somehow know exactly what is right for us. When jealousy mm -hmm. entered my conscious awareness, it brought with it um, a, a host of problems. I turned my whole life upside down. And without it, I would not be the person I am. I would never have done this research. I would never have gotten my doctorate. I would never have um, experienced the profound love, not just from you, but from many other people who have entered my life in the last 12 years. I would not have experienced the same level of grief. Mm -hmm. I, would not, I would have experienced less life, or at the very least, a very, very different life. And the life I had been trying to resolve to the, the way I, I have been living with pushing these big feelings like jealousy out um, of, of my, my vision. It just didn't have the growth potential that, that this messier relationship has. I, I like how you're using the word resolve. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah. So when people come to me with problems a lot that have to do with jealousy and I say problems because it, it often people want a solution for their jealousy and they want it to come in some way that will be neatly packaged. So resolved, like as in, I want this, I want to, I understand I'm having a feeling. I want to resolve this feeling and have it end and have the relationship I want where I just feel secure and it's straightforward and okay. I understand it completely. And that's that. But that's not really how life works. Because, in fact, we will be parted one day. We will no longer be alive at the very least. Fundamental um, to the human experience. Not to mention the fact that here we are on a second marriage for each of us, which means we've got like a 25% chance, statistically, of like oh. lasting. I don't like, I of, don't like of to dying mention. dying married to each other, I guess. There we go. Yeah. That's a really morose way to but put I that. But I think but... that's what the point is. Right? right. So I don't measure the success of relationships by longevity. That's just not for me. 
I measure the success of relationships by how much growth and how gracefully we can transition out of them. Um, so resolving. People ask me for a fix for their jealousy and I say, so I don't have a fix, but what I have is a process that I have witnessed many people work through and I derived this process, these steps through my research, my, um, my qualitative research with polyamorous individuals who had experience with jealousy. Um, what I, what I found was that there was, there were some key things that were present in the stories of people who were dealing successfully. And, and I defined success by they felt good about how jealousy was going in their life, even if it was uncomfortable. And it was causing less and less disruption over time. So they were experiencing a way of living with, of dealing with, of managing, or what I call dancing with their jealousy okay. over time at, with increasing comfort. So those steps really straightforward and simply are noticing, naming, navigating the needs you have, narrating the story of jealousy, hmm. and then nurturing connection to self and nurturing compersion. That's one step. Nurture. Nurture. So there are, I, I write about this in quite a few places. There are lots of guest episodes I've done with people talking about jealousy. And I am working on, I am currently working on another study about jealousy um, in the monogamous imagination. And getting that study into the field has been sort of a, a dream for, for two years now, because I realized very quickly that the imagination around jealousy is impacted by what you expect your partner to do. Those five steps. Wow, that's a... <laughs> yeah, but wow. the imagination of jealousy is like impacted by what you expect your partner to do about your jealous feeling. <laughs> okay. Monogamy writes a check it cannot cash. Because I can't do anything about Monogamy what Monogamy tries your to promise you that you will not experience mm. jealousy. Monogamy can't promise you that. In fact, most people will experience jealousy at some point. That's not the problem. The problem is, what do you do with it? So I'm not saying monogamy is bad. In fact, monogamy is great. But if you are using monogamy to try to escape ever feeling jealous, oh, yeah. um, that, like, so turn on any... Um, any streaming music service at all right now, and you will be able to, in short order, amass a list of 20 songs that center on jealousy. So fast. I stopped counting when I'd gathered over 300 songs, and that was it took me like a week to just easily find. Jealousy is everywhere. But if I reclaim responsibility for jealousy... If I take the onus of, I feel jealousy and I stop pointing my fingers at you and saying, I need you to control this behavior. You have to change what you're doing. You have to change something. Make me stop feeling this way. Mm. If I reclaim that, I have the opportunity to interact with my jealous feelings differently, which changes everything. I reclaim an immense amount of life force just by doing that. So that's the first step. The first step is just noticing. I have jealousy and it's mine. It's, it's mine. It's not whether that jealousy is born of like real details that you see, objective details that you see in the world or imaginal ones. At first, the, the really important thing is just to get clear, jealousy exists. And you might have some shame tied to your jealousy if you were taught as a little kid to like share everything and, to, and that jealousy was a bad feeling. You might not even recognize jealousy. So you might find yourself kind of missing that. Like, no, I feel other things. I'm trying to name it anything else. I find that there's a lot of power in just saying, oh, I feel jealousy. Well, okay. that's been, that's the experience I just kind of described. Yeah. Um, so oh. apparently um, I learned that jealousy wasn't a thing I was supposed to feel, so I turned it into other things. Well, when I moved into your house, the jealousy word was forbidden. We were not to use the word jealousy. <laughs> that, that's helpful. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, so this was actually a huge part of my learning was, so we repressed 
we suppressed yes. and repressed the whole concept of jealousy so deeply for two and a half years because the idea that you tattooed it on your back. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's... I didn't know that this is what was happening, yep. but as I combed through the data of my own life, which is one of the things I do as a qualitative researcher, I try to get clear on what my biases are and what's going on. And yeah, we forbade the use of the word. And so what we did is we, we hid it from our view. We couldn't look at it. So, so that's like a step beyond. It's just jealousy. Oh yeah. We really it's seriously. It's taking repressed. that and saying, okay, but there's never going to be. And jealousy. this is a thing that sometimes no, happens in the, the non-monogamy world is some people successfully manage to like, like have conversations about jealousy. Lots of people do. In fact, I, I've gathered lots and lots of stories of people navigating jealousy by really digging into it and making it a completely normalized thing to talk about. But some people, some, uh, and some communities, uh, really like they, they really disdain the whole concept of jealousy. They, they've decided that it's just like a bad human quality. And if you experience jealousy, there's this sort of bad, like bad polyamorous person. Yeah. I mean, I've seen that in some polyamory circles where somebody says with pride, I don't feel jealous. And that pride is it implies it is the implication that jealousy is a thing that why evolved people of, wouldn't or, feel or that right. you should feel ashamed that's not what it is so it's let's a do human... away with the myth of the yeah. good poly person yeah the good polyamorous person who like just doesn't feel jealous yeah. we're just different we're different if you don't happen to feel jealousy or you don't recognize it or you just know how to interact with it in a way that doesn't cause trouble for other people cool Great. awesome but let's not shove it into the deep, dark unconscious. It's not helpful. And let's not judge other people for where they are in their journey yeah, yeah. with coming to terms with jealousy. Because at first you were, you were like, I don't know. I don't think I, I feel jealousy. I didn't so. feel like I was trying to avoid it. Yeah. Um, and your my experience of you as a lover is that you, when you feel jealous, you're a little twerpy, but you're not, you are very gentle about it. In fact, it's it's not highly problematic. So you didn't do a huge amount of damage by That's disowning good. jealousy. You you did damage in other in ways. In other Don't ways. Don't worry. Yeah, and okay, like good, immense, thanks. horrible. Yeah. Like terrible. I do like to be seen. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but not there. So that first step though, and that's, this is what I really want to focus on today. We're not going to, I'm not going to try to cover all of this in one episode. We're just going to start with the first thing. The first two things really. Noticing that you're jealous starts with becoming aware of your body's sensations. What does your body experience when you are feeling jealous? Um, I have had the opportunity to ask a lot of people. So I've heard things like um, electrical sensations, tightness in the stomach, tightness in the chest, my throat closes up. I get hot behind my ears. My whole chest heats up. I feel tense. I feel frozen. I feel like I can't turn in any direction. I have to stare straight ahead. I feel like I have to go to sleep. I feel like I need to go run. I, I have heard so many sensation words. There's not one way that people experience this. The key is for you to start identifying what are your early warning sensations about jealousy. Like jealousy has entered the room. It is now on stage. The sooner you can identify those sensations and the more clear you are, oh, oh, that's a sensation of jealousy. So for me, I get this electrical ping that runs behind my ears, down my neck on both sides. Boop. I know jealousy's on stage. There are some other ones that come up too, but that's like super clear. I know it. Um, by identifying it, I have the opportunity to do two things. One, take a breath. Just take a breath. Having a feeling is not an emergency, but boy, it feels like it. Mm -hmm. So I take a breath or 12, however many I need. And I give myself the grace to just say, this is me feeling want for something, for someone. Okay. I want this. I feel, I feel the, 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 all the emotions that come with jealousy. I feel them because I desire someone. So this is what you were talking about earlier about jealousy pointing to something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jealousy is a, it, it's in fact, one of its strengths is 
recognizing that jealousy is a great indicator of what we care about. There is no perfect way to deal with jealousy, but when we know this, we can take the next steps. And the next step is to, now that I've noticed the sensations in my body, come up with a plan. What am I going to do? And I find that in order to know what, what we need to do with our jealousy, we need to pull that, we need to pop the hood, like I said. So pop yeah. the hood on jealousy and let's see what's going on in there. What kind of jealousy is this? Is this attached to the feeling of anxiety? Am I, am I getting compulsive? Am I like compulsively checking my partner's um, Instagram feed? Is this attached to like a deep survival level fear? Researchers can spot jealousy as early as six months old. Um, you can see that in civil hearts research. You can see it in Lagerstee's research. Um, it comes, it, it's been established that jealousy is hardwired because it helps promote the bond between the infant and the caregiver. That makes sense, right? Like an interruption from a sibling or another being interrupting that caregiver bond when you are a helpless infant. Sure. We're going to cause a problem, but we don't want to keep acting like an infant. Our adult right. bonds they are by nature not actually survival relationships. Adult relationships need to be at choice, which means I need to allow for the fact that I'm going to have feelings of deep insecurity at times, and that doesn't mean it's your problem to fix it. Coming to terms with that is hard. It is. And necessary. I can have a feeling like deep fear without acting on it. Yeah. Without lashing out, without asking and I think, you to do anything. And, about and it. I think generally we know some of that. You know, we're taught not 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 to take out our anger on people. Well, right. And I was gonna ask you, you've you have read a lot of stories of jealousy. You've exposed yourself to lots of different stories. Um in in the culture that we are in, you and I here yeah. in the United States um, is jealousy, are the, do the stories suggest that jealousy is in fact the other person's problem? The stories do they support sure that? Do. Don't, so they sure do. You know. Okay. So I did a TEDx on jealousy and one of the lines that people, that sticks in people's mind out of that TEDx talk is, you know, like, listen to the Beatles song. I'd rather see you dead little girl than to be with another man. That's like a happy-go-lucky song from the 60s. What the hell is wrong with us? So so yes. we've said jealousy is a thing that we can plaster on other people and say, this is your problem, even though it's my feeling. And you're saying, open up the hood and look at what's underneath there. And okay. what you see is emotions that we do know are our own to handle right. and that we shouldn't make other people deal with. So it's if, an interesting if that song, If that song by the Beatles... Um, weren't about jealousy and instead was just about flat out anger. I want to see you dead. Is that the same song? I'd rather see you it's... dead than be angry at you, for example. So that song, yeah. it, I'm not saying the song wouldn't get made. We have some just straight up yeah, okay. violent well, songs yeah. too, but I don't think it would have the same timber and um, that poppy upbeat that it's got going on. <laughs> yeah. I don't think it would have that. I think it would be a little different. And that that sort of sums up what we tend to do. So anger and fear are, are the most closely related emotions. Um, the two big ones, right? Mm -hmm. There's sadness and grief and anxiety, and there's all sorts of other stuff. And erotic energy. Uh, Let's not yeah. forget it. Yep. Oh my gosh. Okay, I can do a whole episode just on that. I have some really cool findings from my research that erotic energy around jealousy. There's a lot of potential there. Okay. Let's put a thumbtack in and, that. And insane. you have seen these things in my judgment because you have been looking for what jealousy is good for, as well as looking at how it disrupts. By nature, anything that has an archetypal core is neutral. Archetypal, the archetypal quality that, that love is means it's neutral. Love is neutral. It is not all good. It is not all, it's not all bad. And I think we, the archetypal quality of death, that. Mm. right? Not all good, not all bad. Um, watching my brother take his last breaths felt terrible. It broke my heart. But his death was a release from intense yeah. pain and suffering. It was not all good. It was not all bad. Right. So 
jealousy has that kind of archetypal core. So I was, because of my training, looking for, well, what if jealousy is neutral, but what we, how we attend to it, what we, the meaning we ascribe to it and what we decide to do with it. What if that's where the bad stuff comes up? And I, I had the very interesting experience of needing to really argue for this point in my dissertation process because um, my, my chair of my committee, who was a, a lovely person I, who I loved so much, um, had only experienced violent jealousy. And so she just didn't see it the same way I did. She's like, no, this, this kills people, especially women and feminine identified people. They die because of jealousy. Our culture does, um, it forgives jealous acts of rage. Yeah. And that costs. Our, our legal system has built into it. Yeah. <laughs> and even worse, our cultural consciousness. And our cultural Like our, our mood about jealousy is, well, but you know. Yeah. Okay. So let's just collectively decide that that's not good enough. Because yeah. if we unpack that and we start to take responsibility for our jealousy and we start to come into engagement with it, and I notice, I start noticing the sensations of jealousy, then I start naming what's going on in there. When I start that naming process, well, I have tools to deal with my anger. One of the things I do when I'm really angry is I go for a run. So I do that. But when I feel jealousy, I don't automatically think, I need to go for a run. I need to go get some energy out. Mm -hmm. Now that I know, once I know my jealousy is tied to my anger, I can make the connection faster. Oh, right. I have tools for this. Okay, let me go use one. Um, I have a client right now who one of their primary tools for dealing with jealousy is to turn to their anxiety tools. And we had we were able to name, because she'd already done so much anxiety work, we were able to name a whole toolkit of tools already at her disposal. She just didn't know to apply them to jealousy. So now as soon as she notices the body sensations of jealousy, she starts engaging in her anxiety, reducing and coping strategies. So you have you your um, your moves that you've listed here um, really provide a lot of opportunities to take the experience of jealousy and and work with it. What you said, dance with it. Yeah. Not let it push me around, but figure out how I can actually improve my day, improve my relationship, whatever. Yes. Improve your relationship. Yes. Yeah. So I don't think that jealousy means that the relationship needs to end. I think it means that some stuff's got to be dealt with. The, the next, the other three steps of dealing with jealousy are to navigate your needs, which is about boundary setting where we have an episode coming up with, and I, I think not too long from now with Melissa Height of higher sex education, mm -hmm. we're going to talk about honoring personal boundaries. Awesome. And I think that that will tie very nicely to how we navigate our needs. It's okay to, to have some needs that involve how your partner acts, but we we do need to, um, we need to get clear about what boundary setting really is. So we're going to, we're going to dig into that further. Um, I'm, so I'm going to skip forward to the fourth step, which is about, and, and this actually can be done at the same time as the other steps. Narrate. The narration, the, the story you tell yourself about your jealousy, the meaning you ascribe to it is going to have a lot to do with what happens next. If I feel jealous and I immediately point my fingers at you and say, I feel jealous, so you must be doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a problem with my story because first off, I've just handed you a great way to hurt me if you feel like weaponizing it. Oh, that's true. I've also given away my own personal autonomy and power over like dealing with my stuff. And I've told a story that reinforces the idea that I'm helpless, that jealousy is happening to me and, and that my re relationship, that I'm not part of my relationship, that my relationship is this happens thing that's you. happening mm -hmm. to me. So na the narration piece is about getting clear. What's the story you tell yourself about jealousy? What happens if you ascribe a different meaning to it? We can go into this more deeply. There's, um, we'll do some exploring around jealousy and it's mythological meanings and how rewriting the story 
can help us really find great joy, erotic energy, um, connection to our self and to others. There's so much power here and there's so much to unpack. I'm not going to get into all of it right now, but there's a lot coming. If you're jazzed for future episodes on jealousy, please do let me know so that I know to keep pulling at this thread because my research is ongoing. And questions about jealousy. Yeah. Any, any questions. I'll do Q&As questions. and those will be bonus episodes. I will do Q&As on jealousy um, anytime. The last step that I ask people to do is to nurture connection to themselves and compersion with their partner. Compersion, which we've talked about a little bit before, it's a word that was coined back in the 90s, um, Morning Glory Zell and um, Jennifer, and oh my goodness, I uh, maybe Robbins, I may, I may have forgotten the name. Um, it popped up at two different places in, in the early 90s, pretty much simultaneously. But the word compersion, it's, it means the opposite of jealousy. It means feeling joy for my partner's joy and pleasure. It takes practice so nurturing to that nurture feeling, that feeling. To notice it and focus on and it. And here's the thing. Just because it's the opposite of jealousy doesn't mean it can't exist alongside jealousy. In fact, the, the very nature of jealousy is, so jealousy is the problem. Well, the solution exists, right? Like the problem of jealousy, the solutions exist in you. The solution for some of jealousy is what else do I feel? What else do I feel? What yeah, else do I really feel while I'm ask. feeling jealous? Mm -hmm. And the example I tend to use is if you have ever seen a little kid eating an ice cream cone and, and, and experience spontaneous joy for their joy, or like they get a balloon and they're so excited that joy yeah. that you felt, even though you don't have the yep. balloon or the ice cream cone in your hand, or heck, even if you're lactose intolerant. Right. I don't want that joy, ice cream, but that kid's happy. So that's coerciveness. Good. But even if I did want it, that kid's happy. So yay. Yeah. Yeah. So we all have some experience of compersion already. We just may not have known the word. Mm -hmm. um, and as my my then 12-year-old said when I introduced the word to him, Mac said, um, well, it's good that I have a word for that now because it's easier to do something when I have a word for it. <laughs> That's true. Yes. When you can yes, imagine Mac, it, it's easier to do. Yes, that is true. So nurturing compersion is the last of the five steps. And I will keep diving into this topic, but I know this was a lot of me talking. This was basically a, well, a short lecture Well, you are class. the expert. Um, I am I'm doing a workshop on, I, I mean, this episode will be up for a long time, but I actually have, I have a jealousy workshop. Um, I'm sure it'll run again, but the first time one version of it is going to run is on the 25th of September in 2021. So um, I'll put a link to that in the Good. show notes yeah. so that you can sign up. There's a quick workshop. It's a low cost workshop. Um, and I'm, we're bringing a lot of somatic tools. I'm going to be doing this first version of it um, with Elizabeth Kristoff, who is an amazing applied neurologist. And we're going to talk about what do we do with jealousy? What do we do about the experience of it in our bodies? That's good stuff. So yeah, I'm not going to leave you hanging. We're going to get more information out to you. Um, if you have questions about jealousy and you want them answered, um, I do work one-on-one -on -one with people. My, my work with couples and individuals who are transitioning to or managing consensual non-monogamy, um, that is a year-long program. But if you're not in a spot to do that yet, this is the way to access me. Um, I answer questions anonymously on this podcast. So feel free to email me, jolie at joliehamilton.com. Or if you'd rather Ken took a stab at it first, you can email Ken at joliehamilton.com, sure. which will be interesting because your answer would be filtered through a totally different lens yeah. on jealousy. Mm -hmm. I am so glad to have had this conversation. It's great. Until we it's, pick it up again. And there will be more. Stay so with more. your experience. It's and not wrong to have a feeling. It's not an emergency to have a feeling. Let's not disown it. Yeah. Keep coming back and visiting jealousy. And keep talking to each other. Thank you for listening to the Project Relationship Podcast with Dr. Jolie Hamilton. And Ken Hamilton. If you're enjoying our conversation, we would be so grateful if you would drop a rating and quick review so more people will be able to find us. 
And if you have questions or suggestions that you of things you'd like us to tackle, please send an email to Jolie at JolieHamilton.com. I'd love to hear them. Project Relationship, the entrepreneur's action plan for passionate, sustainable love is available on Amazon in Kindle, soft or hardcover versions. This book is a succinct, practical guide to improving your love life. I wrote Project Relationship to give you a set of quick action tools and conversation guides that can transform a mediocre relationship into a fabulous one. These tools are based not just on what Jolie learned in her studies, but on what we actually do to make our relationship thrive. Until next time, remember, relationships can be messy, and that's good news.